Hi and welcome back to my skills development project. In this episode I'll be covering the skills that I developed during the production week of Boudicca where I was the sound designer, engineer, technician and or sound one. I then started off the week by not knowing that I was going to be on the show. Due to scheduling clashes with another show happening at the same time, the original sound designer could no longer do it. Therefore, I had to step into the show quickly and adapt it to everything that the directors wanted. Being thrown onto the show with no time to prepare wasn't ideal, but it made me learn how to manage a stressful situation and how to adapt to production as tech was happening. This did mean that I also then had to work on my communication skills as I had to communicate not only with the directors and the, but the rest of the production team, but it was also with the original sound designer to make sure that I had as, the tracks that were necessary and that there were still pr- tracks that needed to be purchased, like edited, that I know which ones they were, so that I wasn't editing things that had already been edited or a track that needed to be edited hadn't been edited because we hadn't communicated th- that it needed to be edited. Also, due to a lack of preparation time I had, I needed to make the QLab file without any real preparation nor planning. This meant that when I got to the old rep, I didn't know really what tracks were going to be used, when they were going to be used, how they wanted to play these, whether it to be loud for a physical theatre slash fight scene, or whether it needed to be quiet as it was an underscore and actors needed to talk over it. This meant that I needed to speak with the musical director for the show. This was also an assistant director, how he wanted each track to be played and what he wanted it to be played like. For example, when it needed to fade up, fade down, etc. I also need to make sure that I quickly wrote this down so that I could create the QLab file effectively. It was really important that I met with the musical director, as without this, I wouldn't know what was happening with each track. And if I didn't know what was happening with each track, something could have been missing or it couldn't have been properly done when it came to teching it or when it came to doing a full tech run. This meant they would have to stop start even more so, which wouldn't be as effective and would be more of a waste of time, rather than speaking with the direct- musical director and making sure that it was perfect, or at least I knew roughly what was meant to be happening with each track, saving, therefore saving precious time when it came to tech. This meant that I really had to develop my skills on QLab, as I didn't have very very much time at all to put the files together, and the last time it took me quite a while to learn all about the way that QLab worked, as well as needing a lot of help from the sound technician at the old rep, as for that show, Oedipus, it was my first time ever doing sound. However, for this show, I quickly put the file together, made sure everything was worked on, and worked correctly with no help from anyone. I made crossfades, groupings on my own, which previously I required help with, further showing how my skills had developed on the software and I was also able to do this in a very time pressured situation as well being the sound designer only for a few hours. The only issue I faced with the QLab file was a track not being detected in QLab. This was because the director changed one of the tracks on the day of tech and the new version of the track wasn't available for purchase anywhere therefore I had to try and download it from YouTube. However, due to the file being compressed too much by the MP3 converter, it was then a corrupt file, and no matter which type of converters I used, which downloaded types I used, the file was always corrupt. Therefore, I had to speak to the director as the only other option was to purchase the version with the lyrics rather than the instrumental which they wanted, or go back to the original track that they were using for this scene. As the track, again, the track was changed last minute, the director decided to allow me to purchase the track with the lyrics, and they used this for the scene rather than going back to the instrumental or the original song they used. This situation taught me how to come up with solutions quickly and communicate these issues and solutions to the appropriate people in the production process, at this point being the director and the musical directors, showing how my communication skills have developed during this production process, as previously communicating issues is something that I've struggled with. When it came to the dress rehearsal slash show day, the first dress rehearsal, the calling of the cues from the DSM, wasn't the best, meaning that I had to speak with them afterwards to make sure that all the numbers were in the prompt copy were correct, as they kept on mixing up the LX numbers and the sound numbers, which was really confusing to both me and the LX designer. This also meant that me and the lighting designer spoke with the director to roughly make sure that we knew what scenes that our cues were in, so that if the DSM did make a mistake in calling the numbers, we knew that, oh, there's not a sound cue in this number, they must have mean LX. But this also meant that the LX cue, if they did call a sound cue and it was meant to be LX, the sound cue wouldn't play and the track wouldn't play and therefore it wouldn't ruin the scene's aesthetic which the directors were looking for. 
However, this dress run did go horribly wrong, which taught me how to adapt to things when it didn't go right. For example, a track being called too early meant that I had to fade it out effectively rather than panicking and just stopping the track altogether, which would have made it more obvious that there had been a mistake. Again, developing my skills under pressure and adapting to ever-changing situations as it is live theatre. Between runs, I spoke with the director about what they required for pre-show, or whether I could come up with something myself as a sound designer. They sent me over a track which they liked, but gave me the creative freedom to edit the track to make it sound like traffic was going over it, and also to make it sound like the back streets of London with tretting and things. This meant that I got to develop my skills in sound editing by making sure that the track levels meant that you could still hear the original track which they liked, but you could also hear the sound effects over the top of it. Also, to make it sound authentic and not too mechanical, as some ambient sounds can be like that, can make, be sounding not realistic, and I wanted it to be realistic to add to the, to the aesthetic of the overall show. When it came to the actual show, I had to make sure that I was adjusting my levels throughout the show, for the tracks and the microphones. As with the sound, it's different every time the cast run it, especially in the actual show, as adrenaline kicked in when they had an audience in front of them. This meant that the volume they were projecting with was not the same as they had been doing previously in the dress runs. This meant I had to keep a real ear out for the levels and making sure that the microphones were loud enough so people could hear them, but also that the levels weren't too loud to produce an echo or feedback, which they weren't, but also making sure that I was adjusting the tracks as they were projecting a lot louder so I was able to push up the track slightly to make sure that you could still hear the underscores that were meant to be there. Due to this, it meant that during the production process, I learned a lot more about the sound desk and whether how to also save and recall different scenes to how to change the different settings on the desk to make it more personalised for me and for me to be able to set it up in the way that I prefer it, in the way that it will be easier for me to operate and sound tech it during the show. As again, being a sound designer, it doesn't mean you just click go. You also have to keep adjusting the levels. Overall, I learned a lot about this production process and in the end, it was a successful production as a sound designer slash engineer. And I was also able to develop my skills not only on QLab, but also on the sound desk, gaining more experience in the sound field, a field that previously I've only done one show in.